So now let's go into how to prepare material. So we have our vacuum backup material here, and we have our single sided copper pad here. So what we have to do um, with this is drill two holes in it to hold it to the machine. Um, so if we look at this machine here, there's two dial pins. Uh, <clears throat> essentially one here is uh, a fixed dial pin position, and over here we have a, um, a variable dial, dial pin position that can be adjusted up and down. So what we want to do is get an idea of where we want to put our dial pins. So if we have a dial pin here and a dial pin up there, um, that actually fits within the 9 inch by 12 inch uh, short dimension. So we'll put, um, essentially what we need to do is mark where we're going to drill. And we just have to drill two holes um, relatively in the center. Um, and it's not really necessary to have a very precise center, but it's very important to have a center um, or holes there in positions that will actually be able to fit within this constraint, this fixed constraint, and this variable constraint here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use tape to mark the positions of where I want to drill. Um, so as a note, um, this particular um, vacuum, vacuum material has pre-drilled holes. So one of them is over here. Um, so I'm going to basically put this board right over this copper clad. And that's where I'll put my first hole. Um, and then actually, um, so from previous drilling, um, I had another hole up here. Um, so I'm going to use that as my second hole. And, um, but normally what you would do is you would find, you just pick an arbitrary position right in the center, <coughs> drill that hole, um, match it up with the vacuum vacuum material, and then drill your second hole somewhere down here. Uh, and it may or may not be a, a second hole up here in your vacuum, vacuum, vacuum material. Um, so just to kind of show you how that looks like, um, when this is properly drilled, you can pretty much fit the first um, dial position there, and then the second dial position will show up over there. And when you put your circuit board on top, here's a previously used circuit board uh, substrate. You pretty much put your board right on top here and line it up with the back dial pin. And make sure that the dial pin is always below this copper layer. That will prevent the tool head from crashing into the dial pin when the machine is moving around. Um, and also notice that there's little um, cutouts around this hole. Uh, there's a feature on the machine called contact by touch. And what it does is it looks for uh, continuity to ground to measure the tool height. Um, so you see initially this tool head here will actually be lowered onto the board. And then the drill bit or whatever milling bit you have will actually be lowered very slowly onto the board. And as soon as the, the chassis of this um, pressure foot is um, electrically contacting uh, the drill bit, the machine will measure that as the, the tool, tool height, uh, or material height for that particular tool. And um, by cutting out these um, sections around the dial pins, that prevents the copper substrate from shorting to the machine's chassis, which would also ground the actual tool bit. Um, so that's why these cutouts are here. So what we're going to do in this next step is drill out these two holes, and then cut out that little isolation layer uh, or ring around the dial pin. Okay. So since this is pre-drilled, um, it was drilled from a previous time, and notice that this other side has uh, it's got a lot of marks in it. Um, you can simply flip, flip these over and reuse it. Um, so two uses per vacuum material. So I'm just going to take the previous holes down here and up here and drill right through them. So what I'm going to use is a um, 125 mil drill bit. Uh, so there's an important difference between mils and millimeters. Um, people get that confused initially, but essentially a mil is one thousandth of an inch. So this uh, drill bit is, is it's called DB-1250. That means 125 mils, 0. Uh, so then that's drill bit number four, and that's pretty much this drill bit right here. So I'm going to take this drill bit, I'm going to put it right in a drill press, and run it through the board twice. So now with my proper safety equipment, I'm going to insert this drill bit into the drill press, and then begin my drilling operation. Um, oh, so I missed one important step. Um, 
Before we start drilling, what we need to do is tape these two boards together so that when we drill the second hole, they line up correctly. <clears throat> Okay, so now this board's ready for drilling. All right. So now I drill my two holes. Notice that there's a lot of debris here. <clears throat> this is fiberglass dust and you really don't want to breathe this. So make sure that you use a vacuum with a HEPA filter, uh, which will be provided in this lab, um, to vacuum up these things. And do not use a standard vacuum cleaner, all right, or just blow it around because this stuff is very harmful to your health. Okay, so the two holes that I drilled don't exactly line up with uh, the actual dial pins on the machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna widen a hole I'm going to use a, a particular bit that can fit in this drill press called the contour router. And that will allow me to basically lower the drill and move the circuit board around a little bit. So I'm just going to like trim a little bit off the hole just to kind of make it a little bit uh, wider so it fits in there. The disadvantage of doing this is that the alignment um, is more likely to be off if I do this. So a better way would possibly be to drill new holes and try again. Um, and I could probably just drill the holes right next to it. But let's see if widening it is good enough and it's really off, then we'll drill new holes. supposed to happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard about this problem before. I could whack it out in there. Well, that's kind of dangerous. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so one thing to note is that I've been handling this material without gloves on the side. Uh, so what you'll find is that Hopper will start to pick up fingerprints and oils. Uh, for prototypes, that's not too big of a deal, but um, eventually, I guess, uh, if you're trying to make a board that you're going to keep it around for a while, you should actually have uh, gloves on, nitrile gloves, that will protect the boards from the fingerprints.